In late 2019, Ford revealed the mach -E and set a new bar for an all-electric car from a legacy manufacturer. Fast forward to today and we have just seen the reveal of the Ionic 5 from Hyundai. In this video, I'll perform a side-by-side -side comparison of the exteriors, interiors, tech, pricing and performance and we'll find out if the Ionic 5 can break through the mach -E barrier. Legacy manufacturers are making a serious commitment towards electrifying their range and the mach -E and the Ionic 5 are results of that effort. The Mach-E is built on the GE1 platform, while the Ionic 5 is built on the all-new eGMP platform. Exterior design of both the cars is influenced by the past. In the case of the Mach-E, which uses the hallowed Mustang name, there are a number of cues that pick up on the Mustang styling DNA. Aerodynamics shape the curves and smooth surfaces, and the appearance is of a car built for supersonic speed. The Ionic 5 is inspired by the original Hyundai, the Pony. But while it reaches deep into its roots, it also departs from Hyundai's current styling language. It looks nothing like the current range of Hyundai's. Instead, it forges out a new design language, one that is inspired by pure geometric forms like squares, rectangles, and diagonal creases. Interestingly enough, instead of the usual smooth rounded forms, it's these diagonal creases that bend the body surfaces for better aerodynamics. An interesting approach, almost like a stealth fighter. Both take aerodynamics seriously, with the Hyundai using flush handles and the Mach-E using push buttons instead of handles. Exterior dimensions are very close, with the Mach-E being about 3 inches longer. One significant dimension that sets the Ionic 5 apart from its competitors is its long wheelbase at 3000 mm. But in this case, the Mach-E's wheelbase is only 16 mm shorter, thereby taking away the Ionic 5's bragging rights. But while the wheelbases may almost be the same, it is what Hyundai does with the long wheelbase that makes the Ionic 5 so impressive. Along with the flat floor, Hyundai has developed a number of innovative features, including a center console that slides back so that the rear passengers can use the wireless charger, business class style relaxing seats that recline, and rear seats that can slide. There is also a commitment to sustainability with the seat coverings that include those made from recycled PET bottles, natural wool yarns, plant-based yarns, and eco-processed leather. Unfortunately, Ford doesn't bring much sustainability into the cabin. The seats are made from synthetic ActiveX, a material that you find in other Fords like the C-Max and the Fusion. Interior dimensions are not out for the Ionic 5, but I expect it to be quite spacious. We do have the cargo numbers, and they are quite similar. One feature that is unique to the Mach-E is the washable frunk that has a drain, which I think is pretty clever. Both the Mach-E and the Ionic 5 feature minimalist interiors, but what I really like about the Mach-E is the portrait format infotainment screen. At 15 and a half inches, it dominates the cockpit, includes an integrated dial, and has a feature that will learn what apps you use and place them within easy reach. The Ionic screen is smaller at 12 inches and horizontal, which makes navigation harder to read. Aside from the screen, Hyundai offers an impressive range of tech features. There's Pixel LED headlights, a solar roof, heads-up display with augmented reality, and vehicle-to-load capability that allows you to use the car as a power source. This tech dogfight continues with both cars offering assisted driving. Hyundai's capabilities include automatic lane change and deceleration in curves. But Ford shoots past Hyundai with its hands-free driving technology. That is a future feature that costs extra and allows you to drive hands-free only on certain roads in North America. But the Ionic 5 doesn't offer anything to match. So we get to performance where the Mach-E has been praised for speed, range, and fun handling. Will the Ionic 5 be able to keep up? Both cars come in two battery sizes with Hyundai offering a smaller size and Ford a larger size. But where they overlap is in the middle with batteries around 70 kilowatt hours. Both also come in rear-wheel drive and all-wheel drive options. 
We have only one range number for the Ionic 5 and comparing it to the equivalent Mach E number on a kilometer per kilowatt hour basis, they are very comparable. So I would expect the other range numbers to be competitive as more information comes out on the Ionic 5. What's also important to note is that the Hyundai has 800 volt charging capability, which allows it to charge faster than the Mach-E. Pricing information for the Ionic 5 is scarce and we only have two numbers from the German website, one for the base model and the other for the fully loaded Project 45. So I'll look at the Mach-E prices in Germany to keep it consistent. What we need is an estimated price for the larger battery rear-wheel drive Ionic 5 model to get an equivalent price comparison. Based on the calculations I did with the Mach-E pricing, I'm going to estimate that the larger battery Hyundai costs about 6,000 euro more than the base and will be priced around 47,900 euro, which makes it price competitive with the Mach-E. So what type of performance metrics are you getting for that price? I'll look at the numbers for the 70 kilowatt hour batteries because that is common to both. In rear wheel drive configuration, the mach -E's motors are more powerful, whereas in all wheel drive configuration, it is the Ionic 5 that has the more powerful motors. As a result, the Ionic 5 beats the mach -E in 0 to 100 times in all wheel drive configuration. Now, if you want serious performance, you would have to go get the Mach E GT, which really takes off and delivers some jet speed performance numbers. Both the Ford Mach E and the Hyundai Ionic 5 are very impressive EVs. What emerges from this comparison is that if you're looking for a lower price point with lower range, then Hyundai is the way to go. And if you're looking for high end performance, then something like the Mach E GT is the way to go. But where these two overlap, in the 70 kilowatt hour battery category, the Hyundai with its innovative features and performance numbers proves a worthy competitor. And especially with the all wheel drive version, this Sonic Ionic breaks through the Mach-E barrier. Please give the video a like, share your comments below and subscribe to the driver download.